The Chinese Communist Party in Beijing are up to something again, and usually it's never good for us. Uh, recently, they've been trying their best to expand. Let's just say they got very much closer to the European Union.、Uh, they even managed to bring Davos, the World Economic Forum, to China for the summer. And of course, with all the interventions they've been making as well, now they're talking about Ukraine and Russia. Now they're defending Ukraine. Hmm, that's a little bit、uh, abnormal for the Chinese policy, and that's why every time they say something, you have to translate. Try your best to translate what they actually mean, because they always they try to be two or three steps ahead of us. Al Jazeera reported this initially, and、uh, they're talking about the. The Chinese ambassador to the European Union, yeah, they have one of those, Fu Kong,、uh, who basically said、uh, in defence of、uh, Ukraine and、uh, territorial integrity, say, yeah, I don't see why not. We should support it and then take it back to the 1991 borders. Until now, generally speaking, the Chinese leaders have been trying to stay neutral publicly. Publicly, they've been trying to stay neutral and saying that well, it's not our fight, and while、well, we are ready to work with anybody who wins. <laughs> <laughs> and they've been sending support to Moscow at times. Now, considering they're getting close to the European Union, they they're bringing Davos into the fold, and everything else has been happening. It seems like a、uh, Chinese、uh, Communist Party and the globalist elite may have something planned, and、uh, and China only look after its own interests and the expansion of the Chinese Empire. So this is Fu Kong, the Chinese ambassador to the European Union, who's been、uh, now speaking out, and it's quite weird how. You have to like read、uh, whatever they say about a few times to try and see what they actually mean. So he said, "We do support、uh, Kiev's goals in Ukraine, which includes reclaiming other Ukrainian regions now occupied by Russia." The timing of it is also interesting,、uh, considering what happened last weekend in Moscow with the whole clashes with the, the Wagner Group and everything else. And、um, now he's come out to say. Well, we actually respect the territorial integrity of all countries. So, when China established relations with the former Soviet Union, that's what we agreed. So, the 1991 Ukrainian border, basically. But as I said, these are historical issues that need to be negotiated and resolved by Russia and Ukraine, and that is what we stand for. So, <laughs> after all that, they went back to their original position, saying, "Well, by the way, we're not really getting involved." You know, we just want peace for everybody. Yeah, we're not into any conflicts. We 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 don't stir the pots across the world. Yeah, we just want peace. You have you have to believe us. We tell the truth in Beijing. Sure. Yeah, we believe you. Now, besides food, Chinese leaders generally refrain from making public comments on、uh, Russia and the Ukraine stuff.、Uh, when、uh, the United Nations referendum on recognizing Crimea's annexation was held in 2014, China abstained from voting. Yeah, we knew that. That's usually been their position. They always just abstain, and they say China has always opposed intervention in the internal affairs of state and respected the sovereignty and the inter- in- territorial integrity of all countries. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, we've seen what you've been doing in Central Africa, in the Middle East, in Iran, and everywhere else at this point. I mean, the, the, the amount number of Chinese agents we have in the city of London at this point—they've <laughs> completely taken over our financial services. And no, they they respect. Territorial integrities of sovereign nations. Sure. Last week, as Chinese Premier, this according to Al Jazeera, a Chinese、um, Premier、uh, visited、uh, Europe for the first time since he took office. EU leaders urged him to get tough on Moscow, and then this happened. So what is he listening to the European Union now? Are European Union and China getting closer, or is there something else? The Baltic nations and Poland are particularly frustrated with China. And uh, back uh, in, in imposing sanctions against Beijing and reducing economic dependencies. So perhaps maybe something to do with that. That they 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 don't want to completely lose all the connections that they have with the Western world.、And、they know that we are dependent on China, unfortunately, but they also dependent on、uh, the, the West when it comes to the political institutions. So they they don't really want themselves to be purged from the tent. Not at least not publicly. So, if anybody wants to talk about any cold conflict, cold war, or something like this, it's actually us versus China at this point, and for the next few decades until to see who's going to actually win this battle, because it, there's not going to be a peaceful agreement 
between the Eastern globalists and the Western globalists. It doesn't matter at this point because we in the middle, ordinary little people, we're going to be hurt by either result. And this is the biggest issue. We have to talk about all this and we have to obviously take anything they say with a pinch of salt because we've seen the historical moves that they've been making since the since late 1990s until now. We'll keep you guys posted on this as usual. I'm Maya Tusi and we are the media.